hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. And Mama and I are always thankful every week, right yes. Mama? Welcome. Every week when you join us on the Sabbath day, remembering to keep it holy. holy. Amen, amen and amen. Always thankful for all of you here on the chat. Yes, we are. Thankful that you're here with us remembering the fourth commandment, which says to remember, right? So we are doing what he said to do, reattach ourselves or re member ourselves to the Sabbath day, which is a sign between his people and him. He himself declared this, that the Sabbath is a sign between him and his covenant people. In fact, it's the way you sign the covenant. So congratulations to all of you out there who are keeping the Sabbath day. You today are signing the covenant. And of course, who is uh, Lord of the Sabbath, right? So who's master of the Sabbath? And the last day, the seventh day, uh, this is the day of rest. This is the seventh millennium that we're all looking forward to uh, when all of this crazy and all of this wild rebellion and disobedience and witchcraft in the world will finally come to an end. And I know a lot of you out there right now just going, thank you, Abba, please bring all this wicked evil to an end. We have had about enough. Come on, somebody. Amen. I mean, I know I get notes from you all. I'm so thankful for that, by the way. Thank you for sharing your notes and your testimonies and the things that Elohim is doing. I appreciate it. I may not know quite what to say back sometimes because sometimes your stories are, wow, just saying. I may not have a response, but I do appreciate reading them and I do love hearing uh, the testimonies that uh, that Elohim is doing in this hour. And so, you know, we are walking uh, through Earth's most difficult days as the days of Noah were. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. They're eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, indicating that we'll be completely oblivious to what time they're in and what days are upon them. And so my brothers and sisters, if you're feeling a little like, you know, you're standing out and, and, and telling everybody a hurricane's coming and no one's listening and they're just going about their normal lives. If you're feeling like that, well, look to the left and look to the right, because you're standing amongst a whole lot of other people that feel the exact same way. <laughs> OK, so at least now, you know, you're not alone. The remnant have others in the earth, their brothers and sisters in the earth. This is what uh, Yahuwah told to Eliyahu. So some of you feel like an Eliyahu out there. You are an Elijah. You are declaring the word in the wilderness of wherever you are. And you are feeling alone. And you're feeling like, nobody wants to serve Elohim with me. Right? I know how you feel. But there's 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to bow. Amen. And so Elohim has to keep reminding us that we're not alone. We are on a, on a quest. We are on a, a very narrow road uh, and it can feel like you're alone it can feel like no one else out there is on the same sheet of music with you but then you find the remnant and you find out wow you 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 know this wow you know about this you guys know about this too wow you're the first group i found that know about this 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 and this and this 
right? What's happening? He's doing the same thing with different people that he's doing with you. He's awakening and he's he's answering the hard questions that you started asking. You didn't want to ask him out loud, right, Mama? Mm -hmm. We don't want to ask him out loud because we don't want to be, you know, stoned or thrown off a cliff. People got pitchforks. All I did was tell them it wasn't the Sabbath day, and they, you know, I mean, <laughs> right? They get angry, right, Mama? They get mad. They get real mad. They get big mad, okay? And, and you know how that is. We have to kind of beat feet. We got to get out of there. How many know he told us? He said, we won't go all to all the cities before uh, he comes. And the cities of Yasharel are not contained within what you think of as the uh, nation of, of Israel in the Middle East. The cities of Yasharel are scattered all to the four winds. They're all over the earth, uh, established by his people. Uh, gathering together elsewhere and uh, this is something that he says we will not be able to go to all of them and the king will come in Isaiah chapter 10 we're going to be starting today we're going to talk about uh, a word that I believe is the word for this hour and we came through a doorway uh, we came through a blessed doorway and I believe that we are now on the other side of some amazing prophetic things and I believe now we are entering into the time of what the Bible calls the day of visitation. Now we had a portion of this. Uh, I believe 1995 was a time of visitation. I believe there were a number of people that were dramatically impacted in the middle 90s as the Ruach of Elohim began to pull new recruits in, pull in a new harvest of people. Some of you might remember back to that time period. Maybe you're old enough to remember. And perhaps that, uh, uh, you go back and say, wow, that is true. There was a massive moment in the middle of the 90s where he began to awaken a bunch of people. And then in 2015, uh, many of you who have been with me quite a while, so that was our 20 year anniversary in 2015, and uh, many of you who have been with us a while know what a momentous moment that was. That was a moment of visitation. Amen. This is when a divine thing occurs, when a moment of time occurs, when Elohim interrupts the, the status quo of earth for a visitation. And in 2015, oh, don't think we didn't. Most certainly we did. We had a visitation. And a lot of you marked that time period in your life as the time of awakening. Some of you shortly thereafter. So maybe you benefited from the awakening that occurred and it started to cause more and more people to light up and speak the truth. And as a result, maybe you were one of those people in 17 or 18 or 19 or 20, and you got caught in that draft as the wind began to move, right? This is a result of visitation. This is what happens when he begins to move amongst his people. And some people say they're crying out for revival. This is revival. This is what revival looks like. Revival is described for us in the book of Ezra. You can look in chapter 10. You're going to see revival. You're going to see divorces. Yeah. That, that's revival. Yeah. That's, that's revival. It certainly yeah. Is. They read, they realized they had sinned, and they started repenting. Mm -hmm. There were all kinds of things. They started putting away the world. Mm -hmm. It's revival. Revival is you disconnect from all things lies, false, and foolish. You repent for touching the unholy things. You come back to the ways of Elohim dramatically such that people who aren't coming back will cry and weep for loss of you because of how dramatic this is. Think about Abram who's leaving the Chaldean area, leaving this area and going with his family, looking for a city whose builder and maker is Elohim. Dramatic. This is the foundation of our faith, a dramatic move. Hebrew means to cross over, means I'm leaving here and I ain't coming back. That's right. Amen. I'm leaving and I'm not. And this is why your family, some of your families figured it out when they saw you packing the way. And it isn't in the natural. They see it in the spirit. 
you can tell yeah. he ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. She's not coming back. Right. They're not coming back to denominationalism. They're not coming back to false doctrines. Mm -hmm. They're not coming back to your fake holy days. They're not coming back to your lies and scams. They have awakened and they aren't coming back. Mm -hmm. And some of you, that's you. Some of you need to look at somebody and say, yeah, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. You're, you're no longer interested in the pig pen. You have gotten up. You have left. You sought for what it was. And you realize that you'd rather be a door holder, a servant in the house of Yahuwah, than the king of the pig pen. That's right. Come so on, you came Bridget. home. And you ain't never going back there again. Amen. Amen. This is what he is calling Ephraim, those who come back from the world having shaken their heads saying that was disgusting that was foul i can't believe we fell for that many of you are those people that are awakening going what they did what they lied about what they did what what, what was there who did they worship you find out people were making bibles that actually worship idols but they're making your bible oh yeah Oh, yeah, they definitely want to get in there. Okay? And these are the kinds of things that we learn. And as you do, you realize, wow, we've been fully deceived. It's like finding out how they make certain foods. And then you finally figure it out and you go, whoa, and you never eat that again. Because you now know what they're doing. This is what's happening in the earth. And this is what's happening with you. Maybe you're one of those people that have had already your a bit of a visitation. And if you cry out to him, if you draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. You'll have your own private visitation. And so now the earth and the world is fitting to have a visitation. And how many know this is when you, as the individual, needed to find your fold, find your house? Uh, Hosea chapter 11 and verse 11. So we just came through 11, 11. Hosea 11, 11 says that he will place his people in their houses. Amen. That is his word, not mine. So consult him concerning that because he is the one establishing houses. He is the one that's raising up shepherds. He is the one that's establishing folds and he is placing members in the body as it pleases him. So if he's Amen. placed you outside, I would ask why. Just saying. Uh, and maybe it's because of a lack of reverence or respect. Uh, Elohim is high on respect. And so you have to have respect for the place that he puts you. If he's going to give you something blessed, how many know he wants you to appreciate and show gratitude for that thing? Yeah. Right? So man finds a wife, for example. He finds a good thing of Yahuwah. How many know you're supposed to cherish Amen. what Elohim gives you? Right. You're supposed to treat that as your highest responsibility. A man doesn't uh, take care of his own family. Right. He's worse than an infidel. Amen. He has no business talking to any member of the body of Mashiach. He yeah. is disqualified from opening his mouth yep. because he cannot take care of his own family. Yep. So don't talk. Show me you can take care of your family. Then we want to hear what you have to say and not until. Right. How clear was that? Amen. And so this is a moment of visitation for some folks. They're finding out he is not playing and they're starting to feel his presence increasing. And as they do, the fear of him begins to dawn on man. In Isaiah chapter 10, he's declaring woe. He's declaring woe. And this is what Messiah was studying and declared when he was speaking. So you're going to see things he said coming out of Isaiah, Jeremiah, other prophets, right? Because... He was repeating the word that Elohim had already been speaking for generations. Take a look, Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 1, he says, Woe well unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. And so they're decreeing things that are not righteous. And how do you make a decree where you get up and you speak? I declare, I'm calling, I'm saying, I'm telling this and I'm saying that. And they're unrighteous decrees. A lot of bold declarations that are not of Elohim. And that were grievous, which they have prescribed. Uh, and that right grievousness, rather, that uh, which they have prescribed. To turn aside the needy from judgment. So 
people needing right judgment, and the only place they're going to get that is from Elohim, and they've stepped in front. He's speaking of a specific group who follow the fallen angels, who stepped in front to turn the needy away from judgment. We can fall for the same trick if we're not paying attention and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey. How many know widows are to be honored and respected? Amen. All right? And that they may rob the fatherless. So this is going on on a wholesale level across the earth. It is, a, it is a, an ongoing judgment. And what will you do? Listen to this. Okay? And what will you do? Because this is pure religion undefiled. To uh, visit the widow and to care for the fatherless. So this is like square. Square. One on one. Basic. True sons and daughter behavior. Okay? And what will you do in the day of what? Visitation. Uh, okay. So here we're getting to it. The day of visitation, and then the desolation which shall come from far, to which you will flee for to whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave? And where will you leave? And where will you leave? Pay attention, because this is a passage that they're not going to listen to you, the remnant, rare group. You're paying attention. Where will you leave your glory? Didn't he tell you you were going to bring the glory in from the nations? Where do you bring that? Where his name is. Without me, they shall bow down under the prisoners. So because they have become ignorant, they don't even know his name. They don't even know who it is they worship. They're worshiping fables. They're worshiping lies. They fell for cunning craftiness, uh, and why, whereby men lie in wait to deceive in the dark, in the quiet. And he said, without me, they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. They're going to be that low. For all this... His anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And so Elohim, even though people have fallen for falsehood and believe lies by master witches, by master masons, by master occultists who knew exactly what they were doing and deliberately deceived you so that they could then bring upon you and this world their vision their plan that's a different vision than the vision of Elohim so we have division or two visions trying to operate in the same earth that's why you have all the strife you have that's why you have all the evil work because where there's envy and strife there is confusion lack of fusion anti-fusion fusion is coming together in heat anti-fusion or confusion is separating coldly all right so the hearts of many are waxing, what? Cold. Because iniquity is abounding. Now, there are certain people that knew full well that if you learned, like they did in the book of Ezra, where they find the accurate scroll and read it, just read it, nothing else, just read it, it brings revival, it brings repentance, it brings conviction. So they had no choice. If they were trying to bring in their world, they had no choice but to tamper with the holy word of Yahuwah Sebaot so that people would then walk in confusion and then begin debating and begin arguing. And the devil goes over there and laughs because he waits until you're so frustrated with each other and so angry with one another since no one can resolve the debate it goes on and on and on and on and on. And he laughs at you and goes, well, you guys are all super religious. And man, there's a lot of religious going on over there. And gosh, you know, he created this mess. Right. And then comes and makes fun of you as you're trying to sort out the mess he made. Man, I just, you know, we're just going to go over here and do brotherly love and seekers of truth. And, you know, and, and, and we're going to take care of the poor because... You guys, you guys aren't doing that, but we're going to do it. And they just make you look bad, right? <laughs> because the devil has a low standard. He doesn't care who you are. His way is broad. His, his road is wide. Amen. And anybody can come on that Amen. road. Anybody fits in. He makes a chair for anybody and everybody. Come on in, right? Yeah. Because there are no requirements. There's no narrow road. There's no way of escape. There's no... 
salvation. No, 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 everyone's in. You're all included. Come on in. And he opens the door wide, making those who are walking the narrow way look like there's something wrong with them. Making them look like the bad guys, like something's wrong with those people. They're, they're awfully religious and always talking about righteousness and Zadok and truth and all this. Oh, stop. Come on over here. Let's just, and see, this is the pull, okay? Oh, hath Elohim really said, see, I want to give you my own private interpretations. This is how the world ended up where it is. We were listening to the voice of our enemy, okay? And so when you do that, if you listen to the voice of your enemy, you're going to end up under the slain. You're going to end up under the prisoner. You're going to end up a slave of slaves, kind of like Canaan, cursed. You see what I'm saying? You see what the scripture is trying to tell you? And so in Jeremiah, this is the passage, or this is the one prophet who was given multiple assignments. Now, Jeremiah is very precious to the people of Yashadel because if it were not for Jeremiah and his foresight and his understanding of the dangers, well, I probably wouldn't even be standing here. Uh, my ancestors left under the uh, warnings of Jeremiah and went up to the Iberian Peninsula uh, where they remained for several uh, uh, generations, many, many, many generations. And, um, and as a result, in 1492, when the edict was passed, they, all uh, descendants of Yasserel had to leave the Iberian Peninsula, which means Spain and Portugal. Then uh, they got on boats and came to the New World, uh, the Caribbean, if you will, and, and uh, the rest, as they say, is history, right? So Jeremiah is pretty important. If it weren't for his prophetic voice, well, a whole lot of people wouldn't survive. A whole lot of people would have died. But the house of David escaped. Many of the royalty escaped. Many of those who Elohim had uh, his hand upon did escape because he had a plan. And his plan was to gather us at the end. He was going to let us see what it would be like to go away from his way. So he, he established the Torah. He recorded it. He established it. He did many miracles pulling him out of Egypt. All kinds of things. The entire earth knew what he did. Everyone. They were talking about it all the way in Japan. They were talking about this everywhere. Right. How that Elohim delivered his people out of the hand of Pharaoh. Okay, this was world news. So, you know, at this point, he's all right, you don't want to listen to me? I am the Elohim that took you out of here. I'm the Elohim that did these things. You don't want to listen to me? No problem. Go on over there and listen to those Elohim then. Yeah. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to see what your fate's going to be. I'm going to let you get scattered to the nations. I'm going to let you believe the lies of the liars and see what the fruit of it is. Are you getting tired yet of the fake, the phony, fake healings, fake deliverances, fake miracles, using the power of suggestion half the time, psychosomatics, all these things are being used against you. It's just all forms of witchcraft. When Elohim does it, it's real and it's permanent. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is watch the relapse rate, and you can pretty much figure out all the fakes just on relapse rate alone. Yeah. All right? And right there, I make a lot of churchianity angry, a lot of church leaders and churchianity people. They don't like that because they don't want to believe that they were deceived. Honey, you were deceived a long time ago. This wasn't just now. This wasn't just 20 years ago. This deceit was begin it began a long time ago to steal from you the name of Messiah, the name of Yahuwah, the ways of the kingdom, the truth of the gospel, lots of deceit came in. You were warned about this. Paul was specific that cunning craftiness was coming in, that wolves would come in, that would spy out your liberty. And that did not mean freedom to sin. It meant freedom from sin, which look around. How many people actually have that? Most don't, amen. And so Jeremiah, he's lamenting what he is seeing prophetically in the spirit. And this gift is the gift showing it. It's not him. It's not him as a person. This is something we all need to understand. Uh, Moses, for example, prayed and his spirit was imparted to people. Uh, when you get a gift, Elohim's gift is going to operate regardless of you, your individuality. The gifts and callings of Elohim are without repentance. That means that you will still give an accounting for your gifting 
even if you went a whole different way. Amen. This is described in Matthew chapter 25, where he comes to collect his talents. Amen. So if you have been given gifts and you are gifted, every one of you are a gift and have been given gifts, um, and that is not being presented to the assembly, to the people of Elohim for a blessing, then you're not going to be able to give a good accounting. Uh, because that's how the gift multiplies. It can only be multiplied when it's employed. If it's hidden and shoved in the ground, you will give a bad report before the king. You have been warned. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 6, he says, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? See, they're not repenting, and you guys are out there preaching to them, and there's only a small number that are repenting. Most are justifying themselves, rationalizing, arguing with you. Oh, you don't have that scripture right. Oh, oh no, it's okay. I'm allowed to do this. You see this? And, and, and every one turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle in the crane, and the swallow observed the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of Yahuwah. So he's making a declaration that people can get very complacent and you can start taking things for granted. So can I just give you a piece of advice? Don't do that. Don't take anything for granted. Double down. He said nobody's admitting that they've committed wickedness, right? Well, be the one that does. Be the one that says, you know what? You're right, Elohim. We have committed wickedness. We repent. Let us be the man that does repent, okay? Um, let us be the ones that hear the judgment. Here's the seventh slide. Are you ready? Here we go. How do we say we are wise and the Torah of Yahuwah is with us? Lo, certainly in vain may he it. Uh -oh. What's the point of it being here if we're not going to do it? Lo, certainly in vain may he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of Yahuwah. And what wisdom is in them? Wow. So this is the seventh slide of the time of visitation. I hope you're catching the enormity, the weight of that. This is the seventh slide. And the title of this discussion is... The the hour of your visitation. Come now the days of visitation. And he says, how do we say we are wise and the Torah of Yahuwah is with us? How many people are, are pretending and claiming that they are, quote, Torah observant and they're walking in the Torah? Meanwhile, they hate their brother. Meanwhile, they do not honor him. Where do they bring the glory? Lo, certainly in vain may he hit. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken low. They have rejected the word of Yahuwah. What wisdom is in them? Look what he goes on to say. He says, therefore will I give their wives unto others. I just, look, I didn't write this. I'm just reading it to you. So you can then take it and look and see if what he is saying has come to pass. Okay? I will give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even to the greatest is given to covetousness. So they don't honor Yahuwah. They all are thieves. Which he describes in Malachi 3. And once something is declared holy, it stays holy forever. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. Wow, he is straight calling everybody out. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly. They've only given a little bit of encouragement. And here's what they've done. Watch this careful. Pay attention. They have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly. They gave them a tiny bit of help. And here's what they did. They said, peace, peace. They said, shalom, shalom. Right? When there is no shalom. There's no peace. Right? He's, he's calling it out. He's saying this is not the time for that. This is the time to realize this is a time of war. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. 
They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. They're committing abomination. They call him names that are abomination, written in the book of Revelation as names of abomination, and they don't even blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their, what? Visitation. Visitation. They shall be cast down, saith Yahuwah. Why? Because they don't even know what an abomination is. Mm. Amen. It wasn't important enough to go look it up. I will surely consume them, saith Yahuwah. There shall be no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, and the leaves shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. So Matthew 25, I'm going to take the talents you have and give it to those who have. I'm going to take away the talents that you have and give it to him who's going to bring forth the fruit thereof. So he's saying, I'm going to get my respect Who's going to give it to me? Oh, you don't want to give it to me? No problem, boo-boo. You go on over there. Who wants to give me the respect he was supposed to give me? And right then, some small, very humble vessel says, I'll do it. Give, take, what was, yeah, Mr. Big Shot. Come on, give me his blessing. Give me that. Here you go, sweetie. There you go. You go ahead and bring forth the fruit there. I love you, baby. You go ahead and sit over there, smarty man. Go ahead. Right? And all of a sudden, everybody's like, whoa. Wow. Ooh, yeah. So he took what was this man's and gave it over here. Because this one was all so full of himself. So all that, mama. He couldn't bring forth any fruit. But how many of this little humble vessel over here? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll bring forth some fruit with it. Elohim sees that faithful servant over there. It says, come here, you, Mr. Talkalata. Come here, Talkalata. Yeah. Give me your gift. Here. Bring it over. I'm going to bring it over here. And we'll bring some fruit forth. Yep. Come on. Wow, that's a hard word. It's talking the day of visitation. It's the day of inspection. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He says, I will surely consume them, saith Yahuwah. He said, I will consume them. He, it, did, did he not say this was the time of the consummation? Well, he's talking. He's saying that uh, in the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down. So this won't, they won't give a good report before him. They're so busy. And I mean, I see this all the time. I see people out there doing rapture watches. That's got to become, that's going to be one of the most embarrassing things for people to do. Is they're going to tell Elohim they were on a rapture watch. We're obeying his word. Didn't take care of the widow. Didn't take care of the orphan. Didn't take care of the poor. Didn't help anybody. Didn't bring his glory anywhere. Nowhere. Nowhere. They, they talk themselves out of doing what he told them to do in the places that he established his name. They don't want to do that. And then when he said, oh, okay, you want to do that? Where, where are you going to be faithful? Nowhere. Nowhere. So there are no account. A no account is somebody that is, is, it may as well be dead. You're literally a nothing. You're of no effect. You hid your talent in the ground. It's done nothing the entire time. There's nobody getting saved because of it. There's nobody being delivered because of it. No. no. The only thing people thought about was saving it. Babylonian money, magic money, and they put it in the ground. Because they couldn't think beyond themselves. And in the process, they proved they were not his children. I'm just letting you know. I mean, this is as blunt as I can be. Uh, because this is the truth. In the 10th chapter, just moving over two more chapters, Jeremiah 10, verse 12, He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and has stressed out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. He does all these things. Every man is brutish, did you know that the originally British was brutish? Just, just saying. Mm -hmm. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity and the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. So do you think getting it right is important? Yeah. 
Look at this. And the work of errors in the time of their visitation they shall perish. Error is not acceptable. The portion of Yaakov is not like them. For he is the former of all things, and Yasharel is the rod of his inheritance. Yahuwah Sebaot is his name. So, he keeps making declaration about his name, and that's when you start to realize why they took it out. For the land is full of adulterers, okay? So, he's, he is making it very clear. He's saying they are vanity. Um, every man is brutish in his knowledge. So, there's limits. They, they have gone away from learning with excellence. Um, they were smarter a thousand years ago concerning the things of the kingdom than they are today. It didn't get better. It got worse. It got more confusing because of things like the Council of Nicaea, the things like the Catholic Church, things like um, uh, the Reformation where it became a free-for-all, and things like the King James Bible and the Masons and, and all of the hidden hand that started to work. All of this is being exposed right here in Jeremiah. He is saying to you all of that because to him that was just a day or two. And in a couple of days, you guys have gone all completely away from the commandments of Elohim. For 400 years, there was a group that stayed and abode together in the Dead Sea area, Qumran, and they changed the world. They were written about in Rome. They were writing about them. Eusebius writes about the Nazarim and how that they were they, they had a lot of the similarities with the Hebrews. Isn't that interesting? They kept the feast and the Sabbath day, which is something that these churchians, these Ptolemic Christians, didn't want. And so they created something completely different, which fooled the world, and all the world fell under the sway of the wicked one. Okay? You're waking up to this, but you're not the only one. There have been, every generation, there have been people that have been calling this out every single generation and usually their lives are snuffed out you see how they operate out there usually they just eliminate those people this is the first generation where they just can't do that there's too much light this is the first time in earth's history that the explosion of light is occurring in such a way that they cannot simply extinguish it and this is powerful and so you need to understand that this awakening that's occurring and many of you are participating in some of you are are a bright light in this darkness and you're sharing memes and videos and content that are helping people re-establish or reconnect themselves with the truth that sets men free the true gospel the good news of the kingdom of elohim yahuwah elohim amen which they knew in the first century they seem to have forgotten since then well that was prophesied by the apostles who said grievous wolves will come in. In Jeremiah chapter 23, one of the foundational passages of Remnant House and critical to the hour that you're living in. And if you look at verse 10, take a look at this, it says, For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourning. So there's all these stupid swearings and people making oaths they ought not make, promises they ought not make, and not doing Yom Kippur to cancel those things. So the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their counts, the course is evil, and their force is not right. Their force is not right. That's powerful. For both prophet and priest are profane, yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith Yahuwah. Prophet and priest are profane before him. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith Yahuwah. So he's warning of it, and he says, And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal, or the Lord. So they were on the wrong hill. And caused my people Yasharel to err. Watch this now. I have seen also the prophets of Yisraelim in a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. So he tells you how he feels about those things. And he says that there are people that are prophesying in error. 
Mama and I have stood in front of people. They didn't realize they were being examined during that moment. They decide, oh, let me pray over you. Let me prophesy over you, right? And so what they don't know is that we follow the scripture specifically that says that we should test the spirits and examine those things which be of Elohim. And we have found many prophets to be liars, okay? And uh, we called them out and they stopped inviting us to their meeting. So there was that. Uh, but in any event, they are lying. They're prophesying lies. One of them prophesied something about Russia to us. There were so many yeah, weird, 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 prophetic yeah. nonsense that wasn't Elohim on any occasion. But they were pushing it forward out of their, out of their own spirit, prophesying in the Lord or in Baal. And we watched it. We called it out. I called it soothsaying. Uh, you know, uh, and it was almost like an interview. It wasn't even prophetic. It right. was, okay, I, I'm getting that you were at the park last week. Is that true? What is this, a psychic reading? Right. And so, you know, you get these weird things. And he talks about it and calls it out in Jeremiah 23. He specifically, this is the passage where he says, he starts out, woe to the shepherds or the pastors who scatter the sheep of my pasture. You ain't gathering with him, you're scattering. You must find his anointed and then gather there. If you gather anywhere else, you are scattering. Yeah. So anybody who gets, you know, Simon Magus jealous of Yahuwah's anointed, right? Apostle Peter's gathering people. He would like to gather some people too. That looks really cool. So he says, hey, pray for me that I have that. Do you see what's going on here? They covet your anointing. They covet the power of the ecclesia. The Pope, somebody said, where did the Pope get the power to do some of the things? I mean, they're mad and they're hot and they're angry. I said, they got it from the ecclesia. He stole the bishopric of Apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he sent me all the way back to the Sea of Galilee to start the entire process again? In 2018, we made a declaration and decree against the Pope. Why? Why does he have us do these kinds of things? Because they're legal procedure, proceedings that have effect in the spirit. Right. And they know that. They know that they're, you may think nobody listens to this pompous man that stands up there and his white robes on and says things. They don't have to listen. Because when they speak things into existence, if there's no power against them, it stands. Because they usurp the power of binding and loosening. This is why you must raise up the authentic fivefold, the Eliyahus, who stand on the opposite hill of the 850 liars and cancel their words. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Kaboom. Amen. But he, it, that's hard to pull off because you got to get vessels that are all in. And how many of those do you think there are? Right. Amen. Right? And so he said that he saw the prophets in Yerushalayim and horrible thing. They're committing adultery. What is this adultery is he talking about? Is he talking about physical adultery where they're taking other men's wives? I believe what he's speaking of is syncretism. Syncretism is the combining of various beliefs and making them amalgamated into one. This is what he is speaking of when he speaks of adultery and fornication in the spiritual sense. You're taking some of Buddhism, you're taking Catholicism, you're taking some idolatry, you're mixing it together with a couple of hundred of and you're coming out with some doctrine. Mm -hmm. Because you want to get some of the Buddhists to join, you want to get some of the Catholics to join, and you want to get some of the New Agers to join, and so you don't want to offend anybody. Right. You're dancing. We're dancing, Mom. Don't want anybody mad at me. I mean, the remnant don't care. Right. The remnant going to tell you the truth. The remnant follow Mashiach. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters, that churchianity is trying to get you to ascend a different way? Because they're trying to ascend a different way, so they had to ruin your method. Yeah. Amen. That's why they stole, they steal things from the saints to get you off, to put you in error. You were supposed to be guarding and preserving. You were supposed to be defenders of the faith. You were supposed to protect these holy things. You weren't supposed to let them tamper with your scripture. 
You weren't supposed to let them tamper with interpretations. You weren't supposed to let them translate anything. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 48. He says, There shall be, in verse 38, There shall be lamentation generally upon all the housetops of Moab. Now, I don't have time today to go into what this means when he's talking about the Moabites. But I can tell you that you need to look deeply here. Because this is what you're beholding him do right now in the Middle East. And he said, There shall be a lamentation generally upon the house of Moab, in the streets thereof, for I have broken Moab like a vessel, wherein is no pleasure, saith Yahuwah. They shall howl, saying, How is it broken down? How hath Moab turned the back with shame? So shall Moab be a derision and a dismay to all them about him. For thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, he shall, what? Watch this. Fly as an eagle, and shall spread his wings over Moab. He's going to fly in like the eagle to try to help. Carry off is taken, and the strongholds are surprised. And the mighty men's hearts in Moab at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pain. So we're talking about the, the, the birth pains, right? And he's describing that. He says that Moab shall be destroyed from being a people because he hath magnified himself against Yahuwah. Fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, saith Yahuwah. Amen. And so he is coming for the Moabite, he that fleeth. He that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for I will bring upon it even upon Moab the year I will bring upon Moab the year of their visitation, saith Yahuwah. Amen. They that fled stood upon the shadow of Heshbon because of the force, but a fire shall come forth out of Heshbon, and a flame from the midst of Sihon, and shall devour the corner of Moab and the crown of the head of the tumultuous ones, you bunch of troublemakers. So he's about to bring his own judgment in because judgment begins in the household of faith and he's going to be dealing with all the Moabites hiding in the midst. And so this is masquerading. This is what this is referring to. And this is why he is saying that he is coming for it uh, because he is coming for the head of the tumultuous ones, which infers troublemaking. Um, and this has been going on actually back to Herod's day. Okay, where imposters were taking positions of authority and then just causing trouble. Yeah. Just causing trouble. And you think of uh, Philip, and you think of John the Baptist and calling out this adulteries and things like that. Well, that was unnatural. But now it's come to a different level. In the book of Micah, I know, not a book you read that often, but I believe Elohim has a purpose for us today. Amen. Micah chapter 7. And verse 2, beginning in verse 2, that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward. So how many, how much corruption are we seeing in the earth today that is getting caught? Man, everyone from judges to politicians to you name it, they're all getting caught. The light is coming for them, right? That may do evil both the hands earnestly and prince asketh, the judge asketh for a reward. The great man out of his mischievous desire so they wrap it up and they do their wrap up smears. <laughs> the best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now, now, everybody say now. Now. Now shall be their perplexity. So here it comes. Trust ye not in a friend. Watch this now, saints whole lot of people on Facebook and Instagram, all these different places, and we've been throwing this word. We talked about this, this word friend. Mm -hmm. You be careful who you call a friend, right? right? Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against the mother, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law, a man's enemies, a man's enemies. Well, look at this. Yeah. Well, look at this right here. 
A man's enemies are the men of his own household. Therefore I will look unto Yahuwah. I will wait for the Elohim of my salvation. My Elohim will hear me. And so this is where many of you are. You got to this place where you started to realize, wow, I, I can't trust anybody. Um, uh, uh, people I thought were my friends, people I thought were with me. Man, this day of visitation is no joke. Uh, it's all every man for himself. Why is that? Because they don't have his Ruach. And the only place you're going to find people binding together in love are the people operating in his Ruach. Now, there'll be fakes. There'll be imitations. But you'll see once trouble hits, that, that love is fake. Okay? And so uh, it's not real. It's not authentic. And it's going to be exposed as the Moabite fake that it is. All right? And so there's going to be dishonor. And how many are watching this? Sons dishonoring their father, daughters rising up against their mother. Okay, things that weren't even mentioned just a generation ago that boy, a girl would get slapped. Boy, boy, get his butt whooped trying to talk like that, right? Yeah. Some of y'all are sitting there going, oh, you don't even know, Peter. Yeah. Or oh, they're on my last nerve, Peter. Peter, help me. You're going to have to pray for me. I got a prayer request half written. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, a lot. Oh, yeah. you, you need to pray for that boy. You need to pray for that, right? Okay. Why? Because of dishonor. Because they lost respect. And gratitude and respect go together. So when they're not respectful, they're also not grateful. And so when they've lost all of this, this is where it's disastrous in a family and a home. You're in prison. You're in prison together. You're, you're cellmates. You're not happy. There's no happiness there. I say, he say he will. Uh, th this is why he's calling out the remnant to call upon his name. They are the only ones that are going to be connecting together. Remember what he promised. This world is for the many, but the world to come is for the few. A lot of people take that lightly. They just think, oh, you know. You know it. No, you needed to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Everybody did. Yeah. This is the hour of our visitation. This is the hour of our inspection. Amen. And so if you're sitting there going, oh, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start getting ready, you know, maybe around Passover, maybe then. No, you need this moment right now, between now and Passover, to start your repentance, review, connections with him, honor him, walk with him, so that by the time we get to Passover, you're starting a new rhythm. If you wait till then, it won't happen. You'll be just like the rest of them that think they're going to do that. And it's just like New Year's resolutions for losing weight, man. Three days later, they're eating pie and forgot. You need to start now. You need to make it part of your life today when there isn't any special event going on. And you start getting in the right routines, if you know what I mean. You start getting in the right rhythm with Elohim. Stop arguing with him. Begin to walk as he has called you to walk. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 41, And when he was come near, he beheld the city. And so Messiah is sitting looking at Jerusalem. And he wept over it. And every one of you know this feeling. And this is what binds us together as the remnant. This is what makes us unite. Only people that can come together are the people who have done this. Who have stood over their city, their town, their community. And they have wept. If you're one of those people that have stood on the edge of your city, of your country, of your town, and you have wept, then you are like Messiah, and you are my brother and my sister. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this day, the things which belong unto this place, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. Not let you out, keep you in. Keep you in. That's imprisoning, folks. And that's what you're seeing happening in cities all over the earth. They're erecting ways to keep you in on every side. And they shall, and shall lay thee even with, thy, with the ground, and thy children within thee, 
and they shall not leave thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Because you weren't aware that this was a moment of your inspection, because you didn't think it was important, Jerusalem, because generations past didn't see that this was a moment. They didn't catch that we were in a moment of visitation. They didn't act accordingly. Well, saints, we're heading into one now. And so this is why my admonition to you all is to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Not to listen to me, because I'm just like you, a brother reading the same things. But instead to seek what his will is for your life. And then, whatever that is, run. Run like you ain't got but a minute to get there. And I'm telling you, that is the right attitude you need to have today. That's my counsel to you. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Elohim, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So you're listening to this? He's calling you into his mercy. Right now, this is before his judgment is hit. Hasn't hit yet. You're okay right now. You're listening to this. He's calling you into mercy. Amen. You have now obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers. Hello? Some of you think this is a new thing. They're calling you a cult. Uh, you're involved in a cult. You're involved in some wicked thing. You're over there, and I don't know what you're doing. Oh, uh, it's crazy. Oh, uh, well, you bunch of religious whatever, right? They're calling you names. They're calling you evildoers. They speak against you as if what you're doing is an evil thing. They may be your good works. They, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify Elohim. When? In the day of visitation. So this is when you are vindicated. When are you vindicated? Not until the day of visitation. It is in the day of visitation when they have it. Now, some of you have seen early stages of this where people get a visitation and then they start realizing, wow, you were right. I had a cousin that did this, called me up. He's like, oh man, I was wrong. I was messed up. And that, you know, now walking, right? Because they had his own private day of visitation. And he had a little, little time to check himself. Right? And so, saints, this is reality. We need this in our lives. We need to be a people that understand that we want to be ones who glorify Elohim in the day of visitation. So, you have to be willing to be, you have to go through that Mark 4 test. You got to go through the persecution, the, you know, the, the ridicule. They got to make fun of you. That's how you earn the badge. Yeah. You get the badge. I was ridiculed. Ridiculed right there, ridiculed, made fun of, called a cult leader. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I got to be the worst cult leader ever. I, know, I don't right? tell anybody what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I failed cult leader school. What? No kidding. What's going on? <laughs> I'm no good at this. <laughs> I was going to liberating people, telling them the truth, and then I walk off, and you guys can't even find me because I'm not trying to control your lives. <laughs> craziness but that's what they'll do they'll call you things like that right yeah why because it's really a lot of it's fear and saints can i just share this with you a lot of the people that you're interacting with on social media and so forth you're scaring them you're scaring the pants off of them and they're getting mad at you and their emotional reaction to you is because they're starting to feel that condemnation they're starting to feel the judgment yeah. and they're freaking out and you know what um rightfully so uh, so those of you that are like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this. No, you actually have to. Some of you are going to pull out of the fire, some saved by grace and others by fear. Uh, that's right there in the book of Jude. Yep. So um, unfortunately, some people don't have enough sense to hear when they get the message early on. They got to wait until the, the hurricane is like bearing down on them. Right. Lot and Noah. Noah got early warning. That's a different group. Yeah. Lots of different group. Lots of the last minute wait, smell like smoke as they leave group. Yeah. Okay, and got nothing in their bags. Coming out going to live in a cave. Mm -hmm. Noah lived in a fancy boat. He lived in a yacht. Yeah. 
these guys are coming out smelling like smoke. That's the last days. There's the last days for you. There's a lot of people that are thinking it's no big deal. This is the hour of your vindication. So some of you right now are starting to get vindicated as things come out to confirm things you said two years ago, three years ago, five years ago. And now they're coming out and people are going, wow, you were right. And they don't quite know what to say. So can I just tell you that some people are walking away from you because they don't want to look get you in the face and tell you, okay, you were right. Yeah. Because then they have to admit that they were wrong. And what does that imply? That implies that their equipment's wrong, their cal calibration is wrong, their judgments are wrong. A little embarrassing. Now they have to somehow, you know, make good on that. So be careful in this moment because they're going to look for a flaw, anything at all. They're going to look for anything they can use on you to say, yeah, well, you were right. But you still park your car like this, you know, whatever it may be. <laughs> you still have this issue, whatever that issue is. So just understand that this is when they're focused more on the vessel than the message. And uh, too many times people are looking for the mistake instead of the yeah, message. That's right. All right. Stop looking for mistakes and hear the word of Elohim. In Luke chapter 21, Messiah gives us this benediction, this ending of this discussion today. He's, this is perfect. Luke 21 and verse 33 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. He is Kohen Hagadol. All power in heaven and earth has been given unto him. So please, please, please pay attention and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that the day come upon you unawares. Mm -hmm. And it is an interesting that in the hour that we're in, the vast majority of people are medicated. They're overcharged with struggles and troubles and getting news reports every minute, overwhelmed, overcharged and surfeiting, drunken, and the cares of this life are beating them up. You see that? And so then the day is coming on them unawares. They're so overwhelmed they can't even know where they are. For as the snare shall it come upon all that dwell upon the face of the whole earth. Watch ye, therefore, so you be different, and pray always that you may be what? What does it say here? Accounted worthy. Accounted worthy. That ye may be, so first of all, you need to watch and you need to pray. So if you're not a watcher or a prayer, oops, you're missing two of the key ingredients to make this pie called accounted worthy. Right. So watching and praying are part of being accounted worthy. Accounted worthy to what? To escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand not grovel are you listening to stand before the son of man do you think everyone is going to be able to stand before the son of man well i believe this infers their review the inspection so he's going to ask hard questions jury it's an open book test folks so he tells you the questions he's going to ask you and it's written right down for you in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. He specifically says exactly what he's going to ask, what he's going to say when he arrives. So he doesn't leave you wondering. He's got it written down for you. So imagine getting this note saying you have to go to court. You got to be there by, you know, this next, you got you know, five days to appear in court, right? You get this note. And here are the questions we're going to ask you. Be stupid to go to court not prepared for them five questions. Right. That's true. That'd be real dumb. Yeah. Okay? You just got summoned to court, and in this notice, it tells you that they want to know these five things. You might want to come to court prepared to give them answers to them five things or suffer consequences. Right. This is not district court. This is not some other. No, this is the king. Yeah. And it's coming. What's coming? The hour of your visitation. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's pray. Barukata, blessed are you, Yahuwah Elohim. We humble ourselves before you and we confess that we have committed every one of the trespasses that Jeremiah was speaking of. And we have sinned against you. We will not deny it. And we will not run away from it. We will confess and repent and ask you to cleanse us of unrighteousness today. And we would no longer be among those who desecrate your name, 
who speak evil in your name, who prophesy in Baal, who do things that you have commanded not to be done. And so, Father, I pray instead that we'd be a set-apart people, that we'd be counted among the few. You're set-apart, you're elect, you're chosen. And I pray that each and every one of these, my brethren, that are listening to this broadcast, would be able to give a good report before you. I pray, Father, that you would cause them, even now, to redouble their efforts in faithfulness, that they would not be like the whore, they would not be the adulterer who is unfaithful. Instead, Father, they would be found faithful, and they would be one of those whom you commend in the review, that you would take the talents of the unfaithful and give them to these my brethren who are faithful, that you would bless them in that day of visitation soon upon them. And I pray, Father, that you would deliver them from every doubt, fear, and unbelief in this moment that they would finish well before you. And I thank you that you confirm your word with signs and wonders following. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, we pray. And the people say, Somebody give them some praise. days of visitation and saints I don't say these things lightly uh, you can weigh them for yourselves spell my name right as you go before the king and you will see for yourself if what I have declared to you is true if we are in fact coming into the hour of visitation then woe to all who take the holy things lightly and woe to all who did not heed the warnings of the messengers Yahuwah Sebaot himself sent for they have warned they have declared they have spoken the truth without compromise to a world dull of hearing you among the remnant the few who have in fact heard his voice and are repenting in this day you who have seek who seek first his kingdom and his righteousness just know that his pleasure is upon you you are that small tiny group that very small elect that he will, he will shake heaven and earth for you. Just understand that. And just continue to believe him, trust him. Uh, some of you have family and friends and relatives, if you will, that are still outside. You have favor with Elohim. You have access. They don't. Their prayers ain't going no higher than the ceiling. So you need to pray and pray for him to have mercy on them because you, he will hear. Because you honor him. You are among his elect. So he will hear your petition. He will not hear theirs. And you say, Peter, how can you say that? Anyone who turns his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer, is abomination. So Yahuwah already declared it. So it's a legal rule and, and, and very few people pay attention to it. So do not turn your ear from hearing his commandments. Well, thank you all for joining us. I'm so glad you were here. You're blessing us every week on the chat and discussions. And uh, I'm so happy that there's a remnant that are in fact awake. It is a confirmation and a validation to the hard work of almost 30 years of ministry to uh, declare the truth without compromise to a world that didn't want to hear it. So each one of you that are awake, well, you vindicate the work of this old preacher. Amen. Amen. On that note, we're going to let them go. Mom and let them enjoy their Sabbath day. And get out of their way. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shalom, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, He alone is King of Kings. of milk and land of honey land of blessing and land of curse land that's in our hearts so dearly so far will sound and we will go Yeah.
land of wheat and land of barley Land of hopes and land of dreams Here I singing the song of Moses Shofar will sound and we will go Of hate.